Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to take some pre-made items, whether they're snippets or color blocks. They're little fabric items that I've made in previous videos that you make ahead of time. You develop a stash this way of little supplies that you can use in future work. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I take those supplies and use them in a piece. I'll make a fabric book page, taking different fabrics and different scraps and threads and different trim, things like that, the usual suspects in my fabric page design process. And then I'm going to use one of these pre-made pieces, and I'll show you how I use it so I incorporate it into my work successfully. So let's get started. Video. So I was asked how I use those little scrap pieces that we make ahead of time the little color blocks, or just the little things that we make ahead of time if we have some creative energy. They can be themed for a holiday, or they can just be little pieces of fabric. You have some time, you wanna make maybe a fabric bead, wrap some rope with fabric. These are all videos that I have. Recently, I made one on color blocking, where you just use fabric scraps based on color and add an interesting element or two to make it work. So somebody asked, well, how do you use those pieces? And that's a very good question. So I wanted to just show you a simple video here of my process of creating a fabric book page using these little pieces. So to start with, I don't start with these pieces. These are kind of my after thoughts. These are pieces that I'll go through this little box here. And these are just some of the little pieces that I have. I have lots of these boxes set aside with different themes or colors or size pieces that I wanna use on future works. When I use the color block pieces in particular, I like them because I completed them off center. They're not perfect squares. See how this one runs off the side? This one kind of overhangs. I can always trim the background. The same thing here. And the intention was that it would blend in with your work or at least not look like you were just setting a patch down. So that was the motive behind some of these pieces. Now, obviously not all of them. Some of them look like just little patches and that's totally fine too. But let me just show you how I use them because it's the same process. So I'll set this aside for now. Now, here's my fabric book page. It's just a whole piece of quilt that I cut up. I have a bunch of these set aside and I work on a page at a time whenever I want. Again, this is not a particular themed project. I have plenty of themed projects. This is not one of them. I went through my stash and I found these beautiful colors, this black, charcoal, and yellow. And I don't really use those together very often. So I thought, well, today's the day. And then over here, I found some scraps of colors that kind of coordinate nicely. I did the same thing with my thread. So even though I have a vast array of supplies, I find it easier to focus on a particular subject if I narrow it down. If something strikes me that, oh, I want a bead or a button or something, I'll go back and get it. But I start here. This is my basis. So I have my page and I have my fabric. I also threaded my needles in those three colors, the white, the yellow, and the charcoal. So let's just see the design process where it goes and I'll speed this along as I make all these little ideas here on the page. I'll try and explain it as I go as well. I wanted to start with this gray color. It's just so beautiful and I don't tend to use it very often. The same thing with the yellow. I really like that. I, I particularly like it together. So I'll just cut it up. I can let it overhang or I can just match it precisely. But for now, I'm just gonna do a rough design. So now I've started my background. I have my first layer down. Now it's time to really play with those scraps. I have the black here because it's just a deeper variation of the charcoal. I have a few little patterns that I can use. And then I have my colors. So there's a lot of possibilities here. I think I'm gonna start now that I have my background because this really is the basis, the starting point. I'll go to my box and just choose some different pieces. I have this yellow, which would coordinate nicely of course, I have this charcoal one. I have a black one, this. And this is the process that I use. I just play around. So now if I want to incorporate additional colors, I can use this piece. 
the black one I can pull in with some other black. So that's a thought. Oh, he's a cutie. So I think I need something that combines the two pieces here. And I need something to break up that yellow. That yellow isn't right. Don't think I want this piece after all. I think I need something white along here. So I like that piece. I might be able to stitch a word here. I think I like, maybe I'll stitch moon for that face. And I'll just stitch everything down. So right now I'm just gonna pin everything in place. So I'm happy with that. Before I stitch things down, I'll flip it over and just trim the edges. I could always turn them under if I wanted, but I think I'll just trim them. So I'll stitch this down and we'll see how it looks. So that's my completed little page here after I've stitched everything down. I added the word Luna. Just thought it was appropriate with the moon. It was a little different than just writing moon. Kind of a name for the little character here. I could continue adding additional stitches or additional elements, but that's how I use just that pre-made swatch. In this case, it's kind of a focal point, but I picked up the colors all around it as well with additional swatches. I started with my base fabric, dug through my stash of different elements, and then ended up with a finished page. So that's how I take one of my pre-made color blocks and use it in my work. I tend to start by choosing my fabrics that I have on hand to make the basis of the page and then digging through my stash, finding the appropriate color block and using it in my work. But of course, you could reverse the process and base your page around a particular color block that you like. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And if you're interested in other artwork, please join me on Patreon, where I show different watercolors, painting, and paper art techniques. Thanks for joining me today.